Uh, today we're going to talk about Superman and Lois Episode 7. I hope you like that opening with the parallel from Supergirl to Superman and Lois, where, um, you know, he takes off his glasses like this and rests them down and says, I want to be unmasked. Now, I've said time and time again, the reason that it no longer serves Supergirl's purpose in her show was because it was destroying relationships around her and everything, and it always goes back to the show that I watched as, as a kid in 2006, which is Hannah Montana, where the secret no longer served the purpose in that show either. Like, it was good because it showed her who was a true friend and who was a fake friend um, once, you know, once she was unmasked and everything and um, the wig was gone and everything. Now, I did would have loved to see a season seven of Supergirl to see how she copes and deals with her identity being revealed, but we couldn't get that. So at least in Superman and Lois, we are going to get a episode um, 8, 9, and 10 to see how this revolves around it. Now, there's been also um, talk that I've seen people say that episode 10 is going to take a time jump of 25 years. So maybe Sarah, I'm not holding this out, maybe Sarah and Jordan get back together and get married and stuff, and they have their own Kryptonian kids and stuff. I don't know. The only thing that I wish we saw was that I wish Cora had come into the show. I think it would have been awesome, but I understand how they decanonized it from the main Arrowverse and stuff. But here's my big problem with that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this in a, ma in a major video reviewing Superman and Lois as a whole after Season 4 is done. Um, but this is just a quick thing. If you're going to change actors for villains and friends for Clark, then why couldn't you do that for a character that is somewhat of his friend in the first season? Like, they didn't just pull that from their ass. They got lazy and stuff. They pulled it from their ass somehow and said, oh, yeah, sorry, we're not gonna, we're gonna decanonize it and say they're not part of the main Arrowverse in season two. Then why did you have John Diggle keep making cameos in season one and two of the show and using the same actor as John Diggle from The Flash where his show is completely over and stuff and he's making cameos onto the Flash series and stuff the same on Batwoman as well and now he's making appearances on Superman and Lois if that's the case and I understand there's double gangers in the in the universe that are exactly look the same but they're you know mirror image so they use their left hand instead of their right hand and everything and while I can attest to that and stuff, there are certain shows where it's not where it's not um, Cisco. It's it's Gypsy or some other character that has similar powers as somewhat of a double ganger to him and stuff. But by doing this and stuff, and by changing actors, you're making it seem like the show should have been more of a disconnect and stuff in the first two seasons. Because first off, you change Lex Luthor, you don't even have the same Jimmy Olsen from uh, Supergirl and stuff. And so forth and so on and and everything. So, I don't know. I mean, there were definitely some things. I liked the episode, but literally, you cannot put the genie back in the bottle. Everyone knows, and they just didn't want to um, say. Um, and then Candace's dad comes out of nowhere and stuff and proves that he's Superman and everything. But at the end of the day, now we get to see how he copes with this the same way H Hannah did in Hannah Montana or Miley Stewart. And we're going to see the next couple of episodes. But what I really like... Um, is he no longer has to wear the glasses or anything. And, you know, now he gets to tell them that he just wants to be a regular guy and everything. But I really like this parallel from Supergirl. Uh, I do think that the episode was well made. Um, I do like how um, the, uh, I can't remember the kid's name, now I'm drawing a blank. But uh, I, I like the quarterback um, who played for Smallville and stuff. And then accused them of powers and everything and it was such an intense episode because they do have they both do have powers but i guess they won't use it for their personal gain to you know be football stars and everything but i really do like the show and how it's coming out to be but the next episode just seems kind of weird to me like a debate episode about like if lois is truly a liar i do think though I will say this, I do think that Lois is definitely an itchy trigger finger character in this show compared to what we see in Supergirl. Um, 
she definitely is more hostile and always yelling at her boys for messing up and stuff. As a mother, I understand, but there are so many times where it's just like, you know, she's yelling for no apparent reason and everything. And then her ethics were always in question because she went behind um, her sister's back and did some things, even though I, I get that the mentor was a bad, evil person and stuff. But that's all I really got to say about it. I don't know. I felt like the episode was well made. Uh, I feel like the show is definitely well made. And we only have three episodes left. So we're going to see what happens in episode 8, 9, and 10. I think the show roughly will end around December 2nd or something. It seems like this show is the one show they're not milking where they did with The Flash. Where they took long breaks between each episode and everything. I think they just want to end the show pretty much and move on from the Arrowverse and everything, but let me know your thoughts on it. Until next time, guys, don't forget to stay radical. I'll see you in the next one. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I got nothing more to say about Superman and Lois Episode 7.